Thank you for listening to Namat's Movie Reviews Podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, and MeWe. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. I'm back in a while. Yeah. That's crazy. Ten years without moving. Yeah. It's going to be happening next week. You know, when they actually, like, tear it down. <sighs> Are you okay with them tearing down the house? Yeah. I mean, it's falling apart anyway. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 494. Out now in the US in select cinemas, video on demand and digital is Landlocked, a film that features a unique blend of documentary and narrative filmmaking in its story of a young man who returns to his soon-to-be-demolished family home where he finds a video camera that can see into the past. Featuring real-life home videos along with an eerie and at times chilling atmosphere, Landlocked delves into themes of nostalgia, legacy, and the increasing role of te- that technology plays in our lives. And joining me now is the writer and director of Landlocked, Paul Owens. Paul, I thank you so very much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you. That sounds so great with your accent. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, well, it's really interesting just listening to interviews that you've done and reading up a bit about the film from what I understand, there was a point in your life you kind of found yourself back living at your dad's place for a couple of years. And when mm. you did, you kind of find yourself in the kind of like in the grips of nostalgia, right? And you're going through family stuff and memories and the tapes, et cetera. I'm just yeah. curious, though, when it comes to like the, the filmmaker part of your brain there, when does that kind of click that you can kind of do something with the resources you have in front of you and turn this into a film? Is it something that you always had an inkling that you wanted to do? Was it something that came about during that time at your father's place? I mean, I'm always on, on the lookout for, for anything in my life that I can use. Because um, really, if it didn't happen to me, it's really hard for me to really make a movie about it. So I'm always on the lookout for, oh, this is happening, this is going on. And um, yeah, I just knew that I could get the house. I knew I could get the the family to participate. And uh, so there was a lot of like, okay, I know I can get this. I know I can get that. I can get a camera. I can do this. So there really was just, there's really nothing stopping me apart from the massive amount of work it would be to do. Mm. So um, just went ahead and did it. Yeah. The videotapes themselves, um, they chronicle the lives of your family from 1987 to 1997. Mm-hmm. Have Had you watched them before um, previously, or was this the first time you really kind of delved into um, that time? And in doing so, um, what does that do to you now as like, a, I assume you're in your 30s now uh, as a 30 something year old guy looking back into a time when you were like very young in, in a time where I don't know about you, but um, 
when I think back to that era, I was born in 81, it just seemed like a different world, <laughs> let alone a different time, you know? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I hadn't really seen them in years. You know, we 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 kind of stopped recording stuff after a while. I think just the VHS kind of went out of fashion. And mm. uh, uh, so it wasn't really until, yeah, after I graduated from college and kind of went home and was living there that I really looked back at that stuff again and was like, oh, my God, this is... I really had didn't remember a lot of it. I didn't didn't feel like I had a connection to whoever that person was who was me back then. And so it was really weird and surreal and just uh, an odd odd thing to see again. And it just I was just was I got to use you somehow. Got to use them somewhere. So it, it ended up happening this way. What I find really interesting about the, how the camera is used in in your movie is that it almost mm. seems like a portal into a different time. I mean, when you think about it, the camera is almost like as close as we're ever going to get to to a time travel device in a certain yeah. way. Um, you can't you can't encounter with it in a sort of physical aspect, but you can go there mentally, spiritually, um, a different ways as well. Um, is is that something that really spoke to you as well when watching those films? That felt like you were kind of like stepping back into like a time portal. Is that what kind of influenced using the camera uh, the way that it's used in in, in Landlocked? Yeah, I mean, I've always loved time travel movies. I mean, Back to the Future 1 and 2 are big influences, I feel like, in, in a weird kind of way on this. And yeah, once it sort of clicked, like, oh, it's kind of like a time travel movie where, you know, the camera is the machine that's allowing you to go back and you're not physically there, but you're able to look through the portal and see it. And and once I kind of was like, oh, this is time travel, and it kind of like really clicked into all the places we could take it and um, it, seemed, it made it make sense in my head i think yeah yeah what's really interesting is that when thinking back in that time and looking just watching uh mason walk around with that gigantic video camera kind of took <laughs> me back as well when when i was a young man and like all the all the stuff you had to do all the cables and the hookups to the tvs and everything you had to do it was a real process right i mean capturing capturing life on camera was just such a rare thing to do the equipment was much more expensive. It was, wasn't was as readily available. Now everyone is just almost seems to be living their life through a lens of some way. Right now we're yeah. talking through Zoom. i got this little device here in front of me looking at my notes. I got, um, yeah. you know, it really seems like we can do and record anything at any given time. Um, and it always feels like to me, I don't know how you feel about that as a filmmaker and as, a, as, a, as I imagine like myself, a person who really just sort of kind of watches a lot of film and watches a lot of tv it seems like that there's been a whole generation now where it seems like they're living two lives um where we used to chronicle uh our lives now we use our lives in the form of video and we we rebrand it as content in a certain way Mm -hmm. it's like we've it's like almost two facades of the same material um you know, when reality TV came in, like about twenty years ago, I think everyone's living their own version of it now, in a certain way. Um, mm-hmm. We kind of that whole notion about rebranding life as a sort of form of content, whether it be filmmaking and whether it be anything else. What's your, what's your kind of a opinion on that? What's your approach on that? And did that in any way affect the way that you wanted to make your film? Because I think, in a certain way, what you've done here is is really kind of ingenious. So many filmmakers, especially when it came to found footage, are trying their hardest to kind of recreate what it looks like to to <laughs> film life, you know, uh, you know, through a video camera. You actually took life on a video camera and rebranded it as a movie. I, I thought it was a kind of really ingenious kind of thing you did there. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I mean, there's so many, so much people have already said about um, social media and how people brand themselves. And back in the '80s and '90s, I mean, there was a big hurdle in that. Um, the camera was huge the mm. battery ran out quick like you couldn't fit it in your pocket you couldn't just not everyone had one dealing so, with analog as opposed to digital as well as a big yeah thing. yeah 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 even just watching it plugging it in could be a hurdle for people you know um and and nowadays it's weird i mean i definitely see that but it, for someone who like shoots stuff for a living i find that i uh, i relish not having to film stuff in my personal life or just my everyday life so Really, I try to resist pulling the phone out and filming stuff as much as I can and just trying not to uh, live that life because it's sort of, that's my professional side and I try to just keep out of it with the personal stuff. But um, 
So yeah, it's hard for me to really have an opinion about that. I, I try to stay away from it, but mm. it is a fascinating thing that sort of you can't help to think about when you're watching the movie, I think, for sure. I think so too. Like I imagine like for yourself, uh, for someone like Mason, for example, uh, your younger brother, like maybe he like in his kind of world, the whole phone would be kind of everything, wouldn't it? Or am I just assuming that? Uh, you mean because of his age? Yes. Yeah, he's definitely more worldly when it comes to that kind of stuff. And he was showing me stuff, some stuff on Instagram I didn't even know you could do. I was like, oh, that's that's kind of cool. So, but I don't know. I think we were pretty much aligned in terms of uh, how we view things and how we view the world and the themes of the movie and what we're trying to say. So, even though there is, he's eight years younger than me. Um, we are still pretty aligned. So I, I don't feel like he, he differs too much from my opinions on that. So. I want to talk to, to about the, the family home that's in, in the movie. Number one, was the film actually marked for demolition or is it still standing? It's still there. <laughs> still there. It's some confusion. Some people are like, oh, man, it's too bad I didn't get torn or that it got torn down. It's like, well, that didn't actually happen. It was just for the movie. We you know just talked about it. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's still there. And I want to talk about the, the notion of a of, a, of a, a home, a house, as kind of like almost like a living entity in a sort of way. Mm -hmm. You know, a home contains memories. A home, you know, not to sound kind of new age in any way because I'm not at that at all, but I think a home can contain an energy because it's had so many kind of like lives go through that door and so many experiences as well. Do you find that as well? Like when you walk through that house again after I don't know how long it's been since you were there last time, but when you start filming in there, can you feel – feel that energy that's in there um does it feel like it's almost to feel the house is almost kind of like breathing again once you're walking through those doors yeah i mean it's it's a crazy feeling to be back in that i mean i get there maybe once or twice a year and it is a really wild feeling just walking walking in through the front door every time and it's just it's crazy how how much stuff comes back to you when you do and i mean as soon as i go in there i'm always thinking about ideas for the movie even though the movie's mm -hmm. done i'm like oh maybe we could film something here that could say this and so every time i'm there i'm like getting inspired to like maybe i have to do a sequel or something but uh just getting inspired to work on the movie and like play with those themes again and uh yeah it is fascinating and, and reviewers have oddly like um been calling it like a ghost story almost where you know the ghosts are the memories and it's been interesting to yeah see people pick up on on that kind of stuff even though a lot of it wasn't really intentional the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by Tee Public. Tee Public is the world's largest marketplace for independent creators to sell their work on the highest quality merchandise. With over 1.2 million designs, Tee Public is sure to have something you will love. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by Amazon, the world's leading online store. Amazon is your first stop to buy a wide range of products at competitive prices with fast delivery times. Amazon is also a world-class entertainment hub that includes Prime Video, Audible, Twitch, Amazon Music, and more. Sign up with Amazon today and experience the best in online shopping and entertainment. Please support Matt's movie reviews on Patreon. Get access to exclusive content, request movie reviews and top 10 lists, and help support my work. Please click on the Patreon link in the description below. I want to talk about um, your process in regards to pre-planning when it comes to a film like this, because there's a lot of times the, uh, it almost seems like two different worlds kind of collide throughout the film, the present day and the past through, to, through the, the footage that we see. Um, the home movies themselves. Do you like to kind of storyboard, visualize, um, write out your ideas, plan them when it comes to that kind of stuff? Or do you go about in a more organic kind of sense in, in regards to your filmmaking and converging those two worlds together? Uh, pretty organic. I mean, we had the script figured out pretty, you know, we had a script, let's say, and we definitely built on that and improvised a lot on top of that. And But really, I mean, with this movie, we really wanted to understand these feelings that we had and, and get to get to the bottom of a lot of things and we had a lot of questions so a lot of it was just more instinctual like not trying to think too hard about stuff um trying to just go in on the day and just 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 see how it's happening and respond and improvise and and move this way or that and 
and try to get some understanding, you know, like what 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 was uh what are we actually trying to say here, you know, not try to think about it too hard and to see what comes up, you know. So no, I didn't well, really about, think about it too much. Well, but when it comes to sound design, because like your hands are pretty much in, on, on all of this. The only credit goes to someone else is for Steve Jenkins when it comes to the yeah. sound design of the film. The two things that I, I really um appreciate about the film is number one, not only the visual aspect, but the sound aspect and the use of natural natural sound, especially the sounds of, you know, the the crickets, the sounds of the wind, the sound of all, all this other stuff. How important was it for you to make sure that the film wasn't too overwhelmed with kind of artificial noise and make sure that the natural sounds of the area of that house, of that land, were they're really prominent throughout the movie? Yeah. I mean, I love the ambient sounds and I feel like they're even more scary in a lot of ways um, for whatever reason. And yeah, we had uh, Steve Jenkins who did the sound design. He sort of I sort of like laid out like a very basic thing and then he built upon that and made it actually really, really, really cool. Hmm. But yeah, there's even just the sounds of the cars going by, I mean, was, was important to get and trying to capture really what this, the house did sound like. Cause that was, you know, for me anyway, that was an important part is just, just capturing it like it was and preserving it in a way. Um, so that, you know, when it eventually is no longer there because it will, at some point not be there hopefully the movie will exist as uh kind of uh a version of it that can be there so when it comes to having your family be a part of of the film from what i understand like you've been making short films forever right and small films right. and you always have your, your family a part of it always more than willing yeah sure whatever you want yeah, yeah. Boom, whatever and it's pretty much the same with landlocked as well he's like hey you mind if we do this I'm like yeah whatever sure I'm curious though, did they know exactly what type of film you had in your head um, that you were planning to make? And when they watched the film for the first time, what is their reaction to the movie? <laughs> um, because it's one thing where you say, yeah, sure, whatever. But when you when you watch a film like this again, because I'd imagine as well, you yourself coming from a doc- documentary background, I'm not sure if this is true or not. This is really the first time you kind of delved into a narrative filmmaking sense. So I imagine that as well would have been something new for them to watch coming from uh, from from yourself. Yeah, I mean Mason, the the lead actor, my brother Mason. He, I worked with him on the script for a long time, and we talked about it for many years. So he knew everything. But everyone else, like my mom, my dad, my brothers, other brothers, they uh, they didn't know that much, and I felt like that was a good thing actually because we could just sort of like take it scene by scene and just sort of work on on that level and they didn't have to worry about how this was going to fit into the larger scheme and i mean i would have loved to have told them but then at the same time it was sort of like i don't know if they cared that much really <laughs> <laughs> they were just sort of like yeah what do you want me to do yeah okay uh, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it was it was more it was interesting after the fact to have them actually watch it and be like oh is this what this is okay like my mom was pretty surprised that uh at uh everything she's like oh i need to watch this again what the hell what, what was this and uh so it was fascinating to see them finally get to see it you know removed from just the tiny slice that they had filmed um yeah it was that was a lot of fun actually yeah. i'm curious about what your father's reaction was because to me this is a movie about legacy more than anything else and it seems like it's a full movie about fathers and sons and I think what really kind of made that click for me was like it's one of the last film, last pieces of, of dialogue, if you can call it dialogue, um, in the last moments of the film where Mason, not to give away too much, where Mason and his dad are watching a home video and it's Mason when he's a baby. And Mason's father says, look at this guy, he's going to be an actor one day. And there is Mason <laughs> acting in a movie with his, next to his father. <laughs> um, what's your father, dad's reaction when he when he watched this movie? Because I'm a, as myself, I'm a father as well. I've actually kind of really hard felt. Jesus, he, he's a hard guy to read. I don't know. He uh, he sort of just made a couple jokes about it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if I really like caught caught him crying or anything like that. Um, Tip away. Well, I'd ask about the joke. Was the joke like a very dad joke? Joke. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his own sense of humor. It's right. uh, dark and weird. But uh, I think he was proud of us for for doing it. I think he, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes unsaid. And, you know, when we were making the movie, there's a lot of stuff that was unsaid that we tried to bring into the light. And, mm. you know, but then the movie having been out, there's all new stuff that's that we've never talked about, really. And, you know, I just we've never really 
gone that deep on it. You know, I think he likes it. I think he thinks it's cool. But, you know, I think it's, uh, I'll, you know, ask him on the next movie. That's why we got to do a sequel, because then I can ask him on the next year what he thought of that one. But I don't know. You'll have to ask him. You'll have to ask him. What about reactions from, say, your audience members? Because before the movie came out um, in, on Jan 6, um, you had a good festival run behind it as well, and it got really good word of mouth from from, from that, really good reviews as well. What type of reactions do you get from people outside of critics, like people who've watched it in the audiences? Do they come up and do they talk to you about the things in the movie? Do that? Does it resonate with them in a personal way? Um, because I think I myself, you know, I, I've already, I mentioned now myself being a dad and a lot of, of the things in the movie. Stuff that's really stuck with me as well because, you know, I watched it a couple of days ago and a lot of the themes in the movie – what I really dug about the film is that it has almost kind of like a eerie kind of calm to it, but that eerie calm kind of like it's transcending messages to me that I didn't really think I was thinking of when I'm watching it, but it really made me reflect on afterwards. And I'm curious whether you had that kind of same experience with other audience members as well. Yeah, it's weird because when we were making it, I was just thinking in my head, like, this is maybe way too specific of a thing. Like, maybe this isn't really what a lot of other people go through or a lot of, a lot of other people think. And I was worried about that. But it does seem like the specificity is what really draws people in. Because, yeah, so many people have come up to me or left comments or emailed me and just been like, you know, this was exactly my personal experience or like, this is exactly what my dad did or, you know, this reminds me so much of the way things were or whatever and it seems like against all odds it does seem like people connect to it in in, uh, in a big way and in some cases i mean there's also people that are like this made no sense to me <laughs> but uh you know the, it seems like the people that get it really really get it and really fall in love with it so yeah that, that's been that's been cool to see yeah as i get older time becomes more precious to me i'm 42 this year um, when I turned 40, that was like really one of those, you know, it's almost almost cliche to say, but kind of like a freak out kind of year. It was also yeah. in the midst of COVID as well, which wasn't, oh, you know, God. fuck me. Um, but um, it's really, now I find I find time to be much more precious than ever before. And it's something that's on my forefront of my mind more than ever. When you're making this movie and you're becoming older yourself and and um, I'm sure you're, like, you're probably within the, the age of, that your father was uh, almost or near of when he was in those videos as well. Uh, do you does the reflections that you have on time and your family life have they changed a bit after the experience of making this movie? Does the poor Owens who made the film differ from the poor, poor Owens from after the film in certain aspects? Yeah, I mean, when we wrote the script, that was you know that was ten years ago when we did like the first really real draft of it. Um, so it has just been a really long time, and I don't know. It seems so different, like. I mean, like I said, when I found those old tapes, I was like looking back, like I couldn't even imagine who these people were even. And it's mm. kind of the same way looking at the movie now where it's like, God, did we even do this? Like this was, I mean, we shot it in 2014. So it's like, just, it, we look different, you know, it's just like, it's forever ago now. And we're gearing up for the next movie. And um, it's like, uh, what was the original question? Sorry, I just... I'm yeah, just curious as to whether <laughs> um, when it comes to time, do you look at it differently now as, as opposed to before, especially since we are, we are all growing older and you're basically almost pretty much the age that your father was in those videos. Is time for you? Uh, does it seem more precious now? Is it different to you now um, during the making of this movie, considering you're looking back on these past memories? Yeah, definitely. Um God, it's hard to talk about. I need to make a movie about it. Mm. <laughs> I don't really have words for it. Maybe it's that's like, the, uh, maybe that's the next sequel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's weird to be to make a movie when you're 30 and then be almost 40 and just be reflecting back on who you were, and it just seems so different. And the the being the same age as my dad really tripped me up, though. Um, yeah, because it just doesn't seem doesn't seem possible. Doesn't seem like that could be right, but. It was, and yeah, I don't know. Um, it's been interesting just just to look at our lives because he went definitely went more of a traditional family route, and I'm making movies about his choices. It seems so. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had a better. I, mean, I don't know if anyone has a great answer for that stuff, but I mean, it's it's uh, it's weird and tough, and yeah. Um, 
mostly I think about the aches and pains, but mm. uh, yeah. So. Well, it's a it's a question that needs reflection. I think it's a it's a movie as well that really makes people reflect as well. And and I really appreciated that about Landlocked. And for everyone listening out there, Landlocked in the US now, select theaters, video on demand, and digital. I really recommend people check out Landlocked. It's a film that's going to stick with you. I mean, I wouldn't call it a haunted house movie, but it's a film that really haunted me afterwards, if if that makes any sense, because the the themes in it and the the approach towards the visuals and the, the kind of like the clash of the old and new media brought together in this film. I think it's really, it's really, it's a special film. I really do think that it's a film that's very much a unique film. I really appreciate that, that as well, considering the amount of uh, films that come my way. It's, it's great to watch something that's unique and and makes me think about it and, and reflect on it the way that Landlock has. And Paul Owens, I thank you so much for your time. Thank you for so much for making this movie. And um, when the next film comes out, let me know, man. I'd love to talk to you again about it. Great. Thanks so much. Yeah. It's great. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews, podcast interviews, and exclusive content. Also, if you would like to request a review and support my work, please join my Patreon via the link in the description below.